Right, this is my uh, first out of the box uh, ever. The um, reason I'm doing this, I went on uh, YouTube looking for an out of the box how to use Jesmonite. Couldn't find one, so I thought, well, here goes, let's do one. Now, this is the uh, um, starter kit from Polysil, uh, one of the UK dealers. And uh, what I'm going to do is, first of all, we'll have a look what's in the box, uh, and then I am going to move on either in this video or the next one to actually using it on some of the papakura that I've done. So we're starting out with some small bottles. As I understand it, that's black pigment. As I understand it, you can add all sorts of uh, additives to um, uh, jasmineite, which include metals and uh, sandstones. And if you look at the website, it shows you all sorts of things they've done. That's some of the pigment. Code, uh, code or code. Uh, we've got some AP wax, which I understand this is for mold release. Uh, some fixotrope to uh, thicken it all up. Uh, we've got some 30mm chopped strands of uh, fiberglass. Then some yellow sandstone additive. The uh, main AC100 liquid section with the actual instructions taped to the back and then the big carton of powder and finally some fiberglass matting which is one of the new ones I, um, over the years I've done car repairs and this seems to have like a cross structure in it, it's like a cross weave uh, which is rather interesting, I think this is probably going to be a lot stronger than the old fashioned straight 90 degrees matting. So that's where you're getting in your box, 65 quid. Right, so we've, uh, having taken all the items out of the box, uh, the first thing we're going to do is this is a, to anybody who recognises it, a ODST helmet uh, from the uh, Halo 3. Uh, I made that using the Papakura yesterday, and uh, what I want to do is working inside initially just put nothing more than a coating on what they call a gel coat uh, which is just a bit thicker than normal uh, so that it uh, just gives the cardboard a, bit, a basic bit of strength before I start adding the fiberglass not wanting to risk knocking the shape out by the you know when, the, when it comes to actually stuffing the fiberglass in again not knowing just how hard or soft this jasmineite is uh, I'm going to do a very small mix to start with uh, what we're going to do is, using the uh, plastic cups so that we can reuse, uh, uh, reuse them if possible, if not throw them away at, at no great loss. And we'll start out with 50 grams. So we'll start out with a teaspoon and a bit. That's already 62. So that's 51. Trying to get it as near as possible, working on the basis that these are chemicals, and, and uh, the more accurate you are, the better. Right, so we've got 50 grams of the powder. Now we're going to pour out 20 grams of the liquid. We've got a thicker trope there as well, just in case. Having mixed it, it does need thickening up. Again, not knowing how much I need. I'm going to guess it there. That's 39 grams already. And pour a bit back. 35. 32. Oh, like this, it's a lot heavier than I expected it. 26. Now I am actually looking at this and feeling like there's not enough there to make a good mix. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change my mind mid-flow and double this and go take this to Porter. And double up the weight of the powder. Use this line nails. If you have too small a mix, you're going to end up with a situation that 
you lose more in the brush than you actually get it on the uh, on the job. Right now then. So we're exactly 40 grams there. So working on the 2.5 increase, that now needs to become 100. It's 95. Yeah, it's interesting, you don't need a lot for it to actually very quickly become heavy. Okay, so we'll take the scales out of the way. And we've got some disposable brushes. Now again, I genuinely don't know how much of a thicker trope I'm going to need. But what I'm going to do is use a second plastic spoon. If I do need it, actually use the handle of the spoon to drip some in. The instructions recommend that you add the powder to the liquid. And again, allowing for the fact that we only have between 8 and 15 minutes, I'm not wanting this to take too long. So I'm going to start by putting about half the powder in, just see how well that feels like it's going to mix to start with. Actually, it doesn't feel like it's done too badly. That felt like it went in fairly, fairly well. So we'll risk adding the rest and hope that it doesn't become a quagmire. Now initially, that's gone very pasty, like a heavy batter. I'm hoping, as part of the instructions say to get rid of all the lumps, uh, which it does say you're supposed to use a bladed mixer, which for a small amount like this isn't really an option. Now that's feeling like the lumps are disappearing, and like I say, got a consistency roughly of what I would call a fish and chip batter. Now again, it may be deceptive, it actually does start to look a bit watery. So I am going to take some of the Thixotrope and try dribble in. That's probably about the size, I don't know, you would call, what you would call a Oh now that really that's made such a difference. This has gone to more like a heavy paste. I'm gonna risk a bit more of this six of trouble on the Just uh, so I would imagine if I was trying to explain how much I put in, pouring it on the surface, the actual um, both those blobs were about ten millimetres across. Now that really has thickened up. So let's get an idea what it's like to actually spread this inside the helmet. So as you can see that has really become quite heavy and I've got to say because it is heavy it's, it's going on to the helmet and I don't, get the, I don't get the feeling that it's moving round I get the feeling that I'm actually getting quite a nice coating on there which in itself will add quite a certain, quite a bit of strength to the helmet before we start adding the fiberglass. Now I'm working on the inside initially, partly because I've never used the uh, Jesmite before and of course with it being a water based Uh, resin, up to press I've only ever used your uh, classic fiberglass plastic resins which these days as you can appreciate are very much frowned upon particularly in education which is where I'm intending these projects to be used um, they tend to have a very different nature of that and their nature does tend to be that when you put it on they actually will, will, will drip and smear and run for hours whereas this does seem to be whether it's actually losing the moisture to the cardboard I don't know but I don't feel, I got the feeling that the actual cardboard's gone soggy it does feel like um, it's retaining its strength difficult to tell no that's caved in there no it may be because I've actually no that may not be the, the Jesmite's fault that may be just me Pressing down on the helmet. Now then, I'm going to hold this here. 
I'm getting the feeling that they, I don't know if it's going off or whether I'm just getting to the bottom and it's the fixer trope hasn't mixed in as well as it perhaps ought to have done again. My fault. First time I've ever done it. This is a, for a first ever, I've got to say, it's fairly painless. I don't get the feeling that I'm suddenly dealing with something that's getting out of hand, which I've got to say, with the uh, old plastic fiberglass systems, I never quite felt I was in control of what it was doing. It always seemed to just sneak up on you, and suddenly you'd find it was dripping all over the floor. And, you think, and because the, unlike uh, this where it's the fairly big ratio is 2.5 to 1, your fiberglass you were actually measuring out uh, from a tube a length of hardener. And I've got to say that the potential for error is quite significant and sometimes I get drying times or curing times that were vastly apart now. I'm just going to press that in again. Well, that's all of it. It's got probably 50% of the helmet done. I'm just checking it for, for shape. So what we'll do now is we'll go away and see how long this stuff takes to cure and tell you about that when we'll do another mix for the inside uh, complete that and then when we've done that we'll come back to you with the final glossing right we went and had lunch and it looks like it's gone into its first set it's still a little bit damp so I presume it's got more to go so we'll do another mix uh, you may as well watch it. And uh, get a better idea perhaps of how to use the um, fixer trope. on it. Right, zero it out with a couple. Uh, go around the edge and do another 100 gram mix. Amazing how little it takes to soon hit that 40. Six, get there eventually. That says bang on filter. that bag up, putting the lid back on, I don't know what this stuff's like long term with regard to um, moisture. Get the scale out of the way again. With a disposable brush. I'm going to risk putting it all in this time, just oops. That might be the downside of putting it all in. Splashing some on there. Let's see how. And then it reminds me of a a plaster that I used to use called Cristal Alpha K. But for the first few seconds, it's very very dry. 
And you suddenly think, oh my word, this stuff's never not going to mix in. I mean, it very quickly, um, the water molecules, or whatever is in them, I presume it's water, seem to wrap themselves around the um, powder, and the whole thing becomes very, very watery. Now, um, I've got to say, the uh, surface finish at this stage uh, isn't good. Now, I don't know just how much of that is me not mixing the lumps out, and again, whether a mechanical mixer of some description um, would do it better is, it, is something I can't answer at this stage. Uh, but you would be mixing a lot more theoretically. Uh, I'm going to use the spoon handle trick again, and this time put a nice what blob all in one go in. Again, trying to keep the mixing time down to a minimum. Having said that, I've got to say that uh, I managed to use all the um, last mix and there was no, it was still not showing any signs of going into its first set. Well, let's have a see, that's not looking too bad. I've got to say, gel coats are something I've never done before, partly because, as I said, with the old classic urethane uh, plastic resins, you didn't have the ability to make it thick up. I'm going to try and turn more, let's just see how, how we can push this thickness. So I've now put the equivalent to 310mm blobs of the Thixotrope in. What I'm trying to do as well is that I would actually like to go around the outside with the classic gel coat, partly just to take some of the lumps off the, uh, the actual papakura, but at the same time it then gives me the ability to sand all the surfaces, which should allow me to produce a much nicer finished helmet. So, as I said, we've gone round about a good a good third, if not more, and at this time I'm going to make the point of actually holding the brush. Now then, a bit thicker. I don't know what I'm giving. I don't know whether the brush is an ideal need uh, tool to put it on. I don't know what else I've used as an alternative to spread. Drawing the two, the old and the new together. Then, <coughs> and I've got to say. I don't know when it comes to the outer coat whether I feel like I ought to put the fixotrope in or not bother. Um, I get the feeling that without it it would be too thin and the nice thing about it having a thickness to it is you are adding considerable strength. And one of the things when this thing, that this really does go, I'm wondering just how much strength the helmet will have with just the um, jasmineite and the cardboard alone. Which in reality, you know, we we are making costume here. We aren't making a real life helmet. We're not expecting this to actually be able to take a bullet hit. It's certainly hope not anyway. And uh, at the end of the day, you know, as long as it does the, it does the two things, which is please the eye and be serviceable enough to actually be worn, either whilst filming or partying, whatever you want to do when you've got the uh, costume on. I personally have got to say um, this is a step towards producing my own 
not necessarily a halo movie because I've got to say um, the halo is is not where I came into Peppercura from. I came into Peppercura from uh, wanted to produce projects for education and also um, things for my amateur movie making. Now then, one of the things that does seem to be hard for Peppercura to do, and this is where I've got to say a certain amount of this may be that I need to learn Peppercura more, the actual program itself, uh, because I haven't found it easy to just get hold of any object and explode it out. Um, there does seem to be a learning curve that I have yet failed to go through, which allows you to uh, break a part up. And I, you know, for the, I've got to say, I applaud the guys at uh, the 405th who have actually sat down and put the time into taking what must have been originally either 3D studio files or whatever um, Microsoft used inside Halo 3 to then break those out into uh, usable Peppercura files. Now it is going to take a third mix to do this and so uh, I won't bore you by doing the third mix on camera what we'll do is we'll come back to this when the whole thing is, is set and I can start looking at making a decision about what I'm going to do with regards to fiberglassing. I think I actually may go around and do a bit of thicker coating because I don't, I'm noticing that uh, the first coat isn't as even as it could be and uh, the piece that I've got left isn't a full third so it may make sense to uh, actually go and revisit some of these bits at the back but we'll bring you the next piece right and on we go um, I've done the whole of the inside now and right up into the uh, visor section with uh, just a coat of um, the jasmineite with the uh, thixotrope in it now what I'm going to try I'm actually going to try the jasmineite without thixotrope uh, so I'm actually not going to bother using the thixotrope but this time I'm going to try with the fiberglass now then as I say this is a fiberglass matting I've never used before uh, it does look quite interesting and uh, one of the things I've got to say before we carry on is it is the actual helmet although it isn't cured off it is actually starting to feel quite supported it is feeling quite durable um, if it was a stage prop I would be tempted really to not do a lot more I might consider putting a coating on the outside but unfortunately I haven't noticed that there has been um, a bit of movement in the panels that have lost the evenness um, and, and I presume that's the damp well it has to be the dampness uh, from the um, first coat so whether there's a way of solving that I don't know but the helmet has kept it overall it's kept its shape it does mean that if I'm going to get this down to, to looking good I will have to put an outer coating on and possibly sand that down to bring these panels back to absolutely flat the question is, does it need it? Do you go that for that step? Uh, would I have been better starting on the outside of the helmet? Uh, I think I would have perhaps lost some of the definition. Um, and ultimately, the uh, chestnut is all about providing strength. You know, hopefully the actual look will come from the final like gel coat. So we'll have to see when it solves play for as they say. Right. So need a, one of the things I did learn when I was younger was that uh, if you try and put these on, this, on in big sheets you will regret it partly because it doesn't fall or form well so what I'm going to do is cut I'm going to first of all find out what, uh, what, how many there's four layers there so I'm going to start by cutting it into 
80 mil strips. Not the easiest thing to cut, but process will get you through. And then I will probably shorten these down into probably lengths of about 200 mil, so that you're never handling more than a short piece of fiberglass, and then overlap them as we go. So I'll do that and come back to you. Right, so we'll cut some fiberglass up and I'm going to mix ready to go. Now then, normally with fiberglass the matting is very, very tight. And what I would normally do, or what I've done in the past, uh, is uh, literally put a coating on the work surface put the matting on and then put a coat, effectively stippled into the back of it. I don't think I'm going to need to do that with this because it's such an open weave. What I'm going to do is I'm actually going to drop the fiberglass in place and then stipple through the fiberglass hold. And I've got to say it's working quite nicely. Because it's such an open weave, what's happening, you can't actually see it from where you are. Uh, is um, the jesmonite is going through the glass sticking to the other side and that time to use a double coat which hopefully should be faster now when I'm overlapping them by about 25mm and then got the first one down of course the second one the overlap automatically helps you I've got to say, I'm very impressed with this fiberglass. glass. It's, um, for what we're doing, it's a lot better idea than uh, what we, you would be using with normal for car repairs. Of course, well, I've got foxed about this because what's happened is uh, there's a fold in the actual sheet. And uh, when I've cut it, I've missed the fold. So then little pieces are a bit too long. And then one of the things I did find, this you can't tell the way you are, but this is a very cold room. And the first helmet was struggling to get into its first set. Uh, and I've got a fire going in the corner. Uh, but it's literally doing nothing more than just taking the edge off it so that I can work without a jacket. It's actually snowing outside. Um, so I've got to say, what I'm doing is as soon as I've done a piece, I'm then moving it straight into the house so that it can go through its set, actually, in a warm room. Uh, and uh, I think it's certainly... So it seems to have made this quite strong. I'm quite interested to see just how strong it's going to be with the glass in. I'm still sticking to the 100 milliliter, milliliter, milliliters, 100 gram mix with which is 100 gram of powder and um, 40 grams of the liquid. This is going on very nicely. I've worked with all sorts in the past and uh, this is about the most painless system I've come across. Like I said, I've got a little bit of a reservation into the water content and it's actually, as I said, caused some of these panels to just swell a little bit. Uh, the water obviously getting into the cardboard Papakura base, but uh, the actual overall effect uh, it is quite strong. I'd say it's, it's added a lot of strength to the point where I don't feel like I ought to be considering I could quite happily do this in one go. And what I may do is uh, switch the camera off, mix another 
that and keep going. Uh, if I can like say at this stage the actual helmet feels quite strong on its own, it doesn't feel the need. Well, that's the only thing I'm a problem I've got. The one that I may have to like it or not get it going because what's happened now is I've just put that last sheet fiberglass in and I'm running out of chesmanite to put it to put run it down, which is probably me being a bit tight with the chesmanite. But at the end of the day, you want this to be an economic system, if not everybody. Is funding it out of a corporate account, um, which is what well, I can say. Unfortunately, <laughs> to be doing. Uh, if it's a education, you've got your budgets to worry about. If it's home, there's a limit to how much you can convince any uh, wife to uh, spend. I was saying that when you look at the cost of fishing, you wonder whether uh, that would be a case. Right, so what we'll do is I'll do another couple of mixes and we'll come back at when it's dried and tell you what I think about that stage, how strong I think it's got. Right, so that's the whole thing. And I'll tell you what, that is solid. Um, I would quite happily consider standing on that. It is so solid. And that's just one coat of this. Like I said, having got, like I said, got, got a little bit wetter, the um, a little bit of that, the shape disappeared. I was going to consider on the second helmet, which is the one, as I said, made earlier, was to actually just try doing two sections, and that one has just had one coat on the inside. And I was seriously considering going straight over to the fiberglass in. But I've got to say, when I now compare how soft this is with how hard this is, the amount of mechanical change is unbelievable. That second one now is so strong. Now what I'm going to do is I am going to run around the whole of the edge. This edge there. And actually fold over the um, fiberglass and do a double layer around that edge so that that edge is really strong and will stand being sawn if need be or sanded so that that edge is, is effectively the weak spot it's got a big strong second ring around there but what I am going to do having learned that is what I have done is uh, I'm going to come back to this one the second one that's following it and uh, I'm actually going to go through the steps of running one coat around the inside then finally glassing it with the mat because without it I think the weight of the mat and the additional um, compound that you're using would cause it to distort even more but what I have done this time is I've let that inner first set so that the actual base so the bottom has got uh, some strength it actually isn't bad you could get away with it almost from a point of view of um, strength just on the, uh, on that, it is, it, it would, I think that long term it, it wouldn't be good. But if you needed it just for a one off shot or a one off prop, that would be enough. It's only if you're going to ask some of the um, guys who wear these things go charging around and charging around that you'd actually need to take it up to this level. And like I said, what I'm going to do is take this up to uh, put an extra ring around the edge. Partly because this is going to spend a lot of time in the showroom. Uh, and then the next step then, because this is so strong, I'm actually going to sit down with a saw, cut the whole of the visor area out, take that piece then, and using the back former, I'm going to have a go at format, forming over that some 3mm um, acrylic, uh, preferably the iridescent acrylic just to see whether it's possible to actually make a nice visor that fits perfectly back into that hole uh, I, don't see, I don't see why not using that as the actual mould for making it we'll get back to you at a later stage and tell you how well that went but that is for the first time I've ever used jasmineite I am 
knocked out with the stuff. I don't ever see me going back and buying any of the old fashioned fiberglass. It's just, you just don't need it. And this stuff is 10 times easier to use, safe. Everything about it is just a plus. Um, you know, the fiberglass works well. Uh, you, don't, you don't feel like you're fighting the whole thing. I'm impressed. And as I say, can't wait to be getting on with. Uh, we're going to do a squirrel helmet next. So, get back to you there with that when we're doing it.